Hello everyone, my name is Brianna Curl. I will be your moderator for today's webinar, Steps to Get Your Controlled Impedance Right the First Time, a PCB Design and Manufacturing Expert Series, and it is hosted by EMA Design Automation and Sierra Circuits. EMA Design Automation is a leader in product development solutions, offering a complete range of electrical and mechanical CAD tools and much more. Zero Circuits has 30 plus years of PCB manufacturing and assembly experience, which has made them the trusted source for end-to-end -end PCB prototypes. And I wanna thank you all for joining us for today's webinar and introduce you to our presenters, Amit Ball and Matthew Harms. Amit has been in the PCB industry for 20 years. He is the Director of Sales and Marketing at Sierra Circuits. Matthew Harms is an electrical engineer from Canada and has been with EMA as an application engineer since 2003. At EMA, he specializes in design set issues pertaining to part management, circuit simulation, signal integrity, and power integrity, but is conversant in all facets of ECAD design. Emmett will start off the webinar with the presentation followed by the demonstration given by Matthew. Assuming we have time at the end, we will field some questions in a formal Q&A. So thank you for your attention and now over to you, Emmett. Uh, thanks, Brianna. Uh, thank you, EMA, for hosting this. And thank you to all the attendees uh, for joining. Uh, controlled impedance is near and dear to my heart and every fabricator's heart. There are some uh, heartburns that happen, and hopefully we can address those and uh, people can uh, have less of an issue with controlled impedance. So let's get started. So really, it, control impedance starts always with material selection. Uh, so we're gonna cover that. We're gonna cover a little bit of stack up design. That's of course very important. And then uh, point C, which is you know how to really provide the complete information uh, to the fabricator, also very important. Uh, and then lastly, cross-section reports. Uh, knowing that what you've specified uh, in your drawings and what you want from a fabricator, uh, knowing that that was actually met uh, in manufacturing uh, is the reason for cross-section reports. So very important. And then I'll hand it over to Brianna and Matthew to uh, talk more on the practical side uh, uh, in the design tools and some design tips for that. So it's gonna be an exciting webinar. So in regards to material selection, you know, picking the right material for the right application is the way to go. And you know, the key thing here is that controlled impedance is not just governed by trace geometry, it's also governed a lot by the dielectric chosen and the material properties. Uh, so that's a that's a key point. And uh, you can see some of the uh, speed uh, the uh, losses on the right of the materials that are most commonly used but you know keep in mind that you know if the the trace is controlled uh, by defining you know the the width and the thickness and we'll cover that a little later while the dielectric is defined by selecting the correct material with the appropriate dielectric constant and we'll talk about that as well uh, and just as a quick pointer, if the dielectric height is reduced, uh, then your trace, that affects your trace geometry and your thickness of the trace would also need to be reduced, let's say if you want to maintain a 50 ohm uh, transmission line. So that's how they're related. So uh, when we're calculating controlled impedance and also in our free tool, um, we use Maxwell's equations for the PCB transmissions lines, and that renders a very accurate and suitable um, result for circuit board manufacturing. And again, controlled impedance, these models are all based on the dielectric constant, the dielectric thicknesses, uh, the trace geometries, both at the top and bottom of the trace, uh, and the resin content. So resin is, the resin content of the material is very important. Uh, sometimes it's not specified by customers and that's okay. Uh, you know, the fabricator should 
take that into consideration when selecting the materials to, to use. And so resin rich materials are really good for manufacturing. So the resin rich materials will flow into the peaks and valleys of the copper uh, during lamination process. Uh, resin rich materials are easier to laser drill uh, and plate for more reliable laser drills. Uh, and, you know, it is a judgment of the PCB manufacturer what, uh, what materials to use and what their resin content should be. But this also affects, um, you know, your DK. So Isola 370HR is probably the most common material. Uh, 408HR is also, um, you know, used widely in automotive and it's a good blend between reliability and electrical properties. Rogers 4350 uh, is very common material. I saw a high speed. Uh, and, you know, the key thing is electrical properties aren't the only thing that's important, but also um, how do the materials manufacture? So that's a key point. Um, Panasonic has always made the Megatron series, which has been very, very popular, but now there's lots of materials that compete with Panasonic in those ranges um, and you know, are, are equivalent uh, in a lot of ways. So correlation uh, between resin content and DK. So the higher the resin content, the lower the DK value of the dielectric. And this is because the DK of the resin is lower than that of the glass weave. Um, you can also get uh, flat glass and it helps reduce the, this knuckle effect that can be an issue. So I guess the takeaway is avoid prepregs with low resin content, um, partly because of uh, resin starvation and lamination and for the other reasons that I mentioned. And when the models are being created, uh, you know, try not to use so many different glass styles and prepreg types. Uh, because it can make the press out thickness prediction a little bit more difficult uh, and also uh, calculating uh, the proper DK becomes a little bit more difficult. Uh, but our modeling does take care of that. Uh, it's not just for modeling, it's also for manufacturing. And so if you're using different types of prepregs, uh, the effective DK can be calculated using a weighted average method. Uh, in our article, however, we use a more sophisticated calculation using the Maxwell equations and where those uh, junctions appear.